Not only that, each one of us will have to uh, have our moment of being at the Sea of Reeds. The great exodus of our lives, of our lives of coming to awareness of Yahweh Shua at the Sea of Reeds. We're going to have to make a decision of whether we're going to trust Yahweh to get us through the Sea of Reeds or think that the Egyptians are going to come and destroy us. So, Mashiach, Hashakor, Hashakri, the false, false Messiah. The only thing that we've here, Yahweh for Christians, and on what they call the 26th of June, 2022. Now, very, very important. Remember, we keep talking about this law that Shaul talks about in Galatians 3, 23, 24, that it is a tutor. A tutor. Now, when you have a tutor, a tutor teaches you how to play the piano or how to ballet or whatever, or, or even hit the tennis ball. Whatever they're teaching you to do, they teach you to do it and then you do it. And you follow it and you complete it. That's what the law is. It is not for you to always have it. It is to teach you. You learn how to drive. You got your driver's manual. I don't think you pulled it out this morning to get to church. You just got in the car and drove. You didn't go get no big old thick driver's manual and started reading it. If, again, you just use it. So this Torah is meant to be a tutor to lead you to who? To Yahweh Shua HaMashiach. Now, why do I keep saying about Yahweh Shua? John 5, 24-29. John 5, 24-29. And it reads, this is Yahweh Shua himself talking. Moses, surely I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and will not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Man and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, because the hour is coming, which is, all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forward, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of death. This is the two resurrections. This is the power of Yahweh Shua. Everything is contingent on his word, based on following him. And... Sticking in that same chapter, go down to two more verses, read verse 39 and 40. To sum it up, you search the scriptures, search the Torah, because in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Saying this to the scribes and Pharisees. What Yahweh Shua is saying, before that he's saying, the two resurrections depend on whether... You hear his voice and obey it. And now he's saying at the end, you search the scriptures. He says they all testify of him. So, remember, he says you think you have life in that. Now, talking to the scribes and Pharisees. So if all this book that you call the Bible from Generation to Revelation speaks of him, don't you think in anything you read and study, you need to find him in it? Because in here you have eternal life. You want to... Be there for the first resurrection when he speaks. You don't want to be one late. Remember Maxwell Smart says, Oh, you missed it by that much. You don't want to miss it and come one resurrection too late. Because you didn't want to Shema. The whole book, the volume of the book, speaks about this one man. Colossians 1.20. Colossians 1.20. And it reads, And by him, to reckon, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, have he made shalom through the blood of the torture stake. All things by him and all things through him. Read that whole verse, that whole uh, chapter in Galatians 1. So, everything again, I keep calling Yahweh Shua the X-Man. The X-Man, you know how Malcolm said he was the X-Man? Yahweh Shua is... Likewise, he is the X-Man. 1 John 2, 22. Everything comes through him. Don't get it confused with the towel mark, which is a T. Okay. 
1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he who denies that Yahweh Shua is Hamashiach? He is an anti-Messiah who denies the Father and the Son. I think that makes it black and white. You don't need a whole lot of education. You don't need to be uh, an old man or old woman to understand that the anti-Messiah is the one who denies that Yahweh Shua is the Messiah. John 4, 1 John 4 and 3, same book. And every spirit that does not confess that Yahweh Shua HaMashiach has come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. And this is the Ruach of the anti messiah which you have heard was coming and now already is in the world. Again, plain and simple, the anti messiah is an evil Ruach that denies that Yahweh Shua came in the flesh. 2 John, I'm sticking right there, 2 John 1 and 7. I'm trying to set up, we know who the anti messiah is very well. He denies that Yahweh Shua came in the flesh. 2 John 1 and 7. 2 John 1 and 7. And it reads. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Yahweh Shua HaMashiach as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an anti-Mashiach. So that's another scripture saying that he literally denies that Yahweh Shua came in the flesh. So now, what we have, I told you we all set up. We all set up and the times are on us. Now remember I talked about how your lovely president... Biden signed over our constitutional rights to the WHO organization. Well, thankfully, that was, I'm going to give you an update on that. That was overturned. It was, it was Biden's 13 amendments. They were voted down by the public health, and with the, this is what the amendment proposed. That our public health emergency of the international concern, without consent of the nations, was to be handed over to the WHO organization. That means it will supersede your constitutional rights. For instance, whether you can take a shot or not. Whether you will wear the mask or whatever. The who would have thought of that. So that was voted down. Thankful to just a few nations. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight nations. Africa. Brazil. And Brazil said they were going to lead the WHO organization if they were forced to um, go by this. Bangladesh. Russia. Malaysia. India. China, which surprised me. In Iran. So we still have our constitutional rights as of now. But the world is in flux. We know about Roe v. Wade being overturned. So now everybody's out there uh, fussing about that. And we know that the concealed carry laws have been have been loosened up. Every state now in the union has the had the same concealed carry laws. So Maryland has tight laws, they're released now. So now you don't have to say, for instance, own a, a business or whatever to get a concealed carry. I have a right now to get a concealed carry license. So that wasn't true in Maryland just last week. It is now. So now every Joe Blow out there, as long as you pass the you know the background checks and all that, the normal stuff, now it's going to be in Texas, 50 states of Texas, right here in, 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 in the good old U.S. of A. And then we know about these food shortages. Now, you think things are tight now. You just wait till next year because your farmers who are, the food that you out there now struggling to get, that food was all farmed last year. So what do you think is going to happen next year? Because the farmers ain't got nothing coming right now. They don't have, they can't afford to farm because of the gas prices. So next year, you better be getting used to fasting. You got people already out there and everybody got a gun. It's going to be off the chain. Off the chain. So you better have your food, your water. You better have your bread and your bullets. Because your neighbor's got them. And if you and he runs out of bread, we come to get yours. I just came here to tell you that. So, this and, quote, Biden said the pandemic, another pandemic, worldwide pandemic will hit us. That's what Biden said out of his mouth. Uh, the pandemic is coming. You think he don't know? That's why. That's why he's all. It's all planned. You hear Darren Muhammad speak about it right here all the time. The pandemic. The pandemic. It's true. 
This is planned. He already told you that it's coming again. And you all set up. Remember last week we talked about you already have your black princess. So you got a princess of England married to an Edomite. So you already got your black princess, so you got Europe covered. You already got your black cardinal, which I'm sure you didn't even realize you had a black cardinal. You know, every cardinal can be a pope. In order to be a pope, you have to first be a cardinal. So you can have your first, your first black pope coming up. You got your first black female Supreme Court justice. You got your first ever black uh, female vice president. So let that man kill over. Ta-da! You got a black female president. And guess what? She's married to a Jew. Her husband is Jew. So you're going to have a Jew and a black female in the White House. It's all set up. Now, the only reason why I mention these things is because the, 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 the man who's last in this so-called race, the white man, is one that, that names everyone by race. Because it doesn't matter. You're not lost or saved by race. I just mention these things because they're the ones who put the preeminence on the melanin content of your skin. Not me. So you got your black princess. You got your black cardinal. You got your black female Supreme Court justice. You got your black vice president. You got the princess who's married to Edomite. And you got your black vice president who's married to a Jew. All set up for this whole system. Remember, this is our apocalypse. Every generation has had their apocalypse. Elsewise, we no need to be pressed for this study. Now, again, last week talking about this false messiah. The beast, I implore you not to be looking, using your eyeballs to try to direct you from not being deceived. Your eyeballs are made for deception. This whole thing about beast has nothing to do about looks. Beast has not what this this thing about beast in Daniel Revelations has everything to do about a gross tohu wa bohu misrepresentation of what it purports to be. In other words, it's a huge lie. It's a it's a sheep in wolf's clothing. So it's a wolf who looks just like what you love and so and, and believe in which is the lamb. You believe in the lamb and you have no, you're not concerned about a lamb attacking you eternal. Nothing's more docile and unthreatening than a lamb. That's what the beast is. But it's in the lamb's clothing. Looks, it speaks like it, looks like it, talks like it, walks like it, eats like it, poops like it. And it's a beast. And you're gonna have to have discernment. And what is this beast? It's the beast. And when all these talks about horns are all riding on a beast. So the beast is the system of government. And is what kind of government is it? It's a Jezebelian government. You know, Jezebel is the head hunter of Israel. She hunts after the male head. The head hunter. And, and this Jezebelian government, this worldwide government, this new world order, will be headed by the white female. And, she, and her job, the, the entire system of government we are in now, is designed to cut off the heads of the black male. That's what it's for. So the Jezebelian government we live in now is the, it's a head-hunting government designed to cut down the head of the Hebrew man, the black male. Now, how is she going to do this? Remember, we talked about the beast has nothing to do about looks. She does this. This government system does it looking like a lamb. Looking like a lamb. It's not going to look like something you don't want. Did anybody turn down their stimulus checks when they got them? Those Biden bucks. Ain't nobody turned that down. Ain't nobody said it was bad for the government. We have our mouths open. We love that government tip. We love it. The Je This Jezebelian beastly government system we're in is going to use the Torah law. Who's going to argue against the law? When everybody is now talking, going this Torah movement, this uh, Jews for Jesus, the Messianic movement, the Torah, the Black Hebrews movement, and the knowledge is increasing. Remember, we taught you here that knowledge increasing has nothing to do about the increasing of the knowledge of inventions. Whenever was there a time in the history of the world where you couldn't say, "Hey, guess what? Um, men going to learn more. Knowledge is going to increase." That was always the case. So when Yahweh should have said it. That's not a prophecy for me to stand here and say, hey, 10 years from now, uh, smartphones are going to be doing more. That uh, <laughs> they, they, it's, it's ridiculous to say that knowledge is going to increase. 
and any time as a prophecy. So I prophesy that tomorrow between 9 and 11 tomorrow morning, there's going to be more traffic on the road than there was when I came in here today to the studio. Does it make me a prophet? No. So saying that, that, that the knowledge increasing, it was not a prophecy. What Yahweh was talking about, the knowledge of himself increasing. No one knew that they would know what they know now when they were being whipped and hung up on trees. That people would know the name of Yahweh. So the knowledge of Yahweh sure is what the prophecy was talking about. And that is increasing. And the Torah movement, the, 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 the Hebrews root movement, the Messianic movement, all these are growing, expounding because of your social media. And so the Torah law is going to be the law of the land. And, who, and it's a beautiful law. So it's going to look good. But it's going to be puppeteered by the Jezebelian government. And your anti messiah, black female. Now you know your Lord God Baal Tamu's group is gonna love that. Black female in charge, the old alphabet gang love that. Your anti messiah will be the black female. So who is gonna be the false anti messiah? That's gonna be a white male. Who's the easiest target to, to, to jump on? Does anybody fuss at a comedian for talking about white men on stage? You can talk about the white man all you want and not be marginalized and vilified. Don't talk about nobody gay. Don't talk about Jews. And a white comedian can't go up there and talk about niggas. He cannot go there and talk about and put down black. And talk. You can't do that. But the white man is free game to shoot at all you want. Now, I don't have no problem with it, but I'm just saying. He's free game to talk about. You can't go there and just blast fat people all day long and, and you're going to get problems. But you can blast the white man all you want. So here's an easy target. That's going to be your false, false messiah. Your fake false messiah is going to be the white, a white male leader. Actually, I think it's going to be in the three. We'll talk about that later on. And then who's going to overcome the false, false messiah will be the black female. That'll be your anti-messiah. Who's your false prophet? Black male or Hebrew male. That'll be your false prophet. Like, again, that's going to bring in everybody. What Hasatan does, who, remember, he fooled a third of the heavenly host. He's got a Get incorporate all peoples, all religions, and male and female. And this is how you do it. Because like I said, the Messianic movement, the Black Hebrew movements, all these will accept a Black Hebrew as a prophet. He will be a false prophet. Matter of fact, we even got that. Let's go to Acts 13 and 6. Acts 13 and 6. We even have a, an example of that right here in the book. Acts 13 and 6. Now, when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Hebrew, whose name was Bar Yahweh Shua, or Bain Yahweh Shua. Your Bible says Bar Jesus. Bar is Greek for the Hebrew Bain. Bain means son. And they have Jesus, and you know it ain't no Jesus. It's Yahweh Shua. So, and it says he was a Hebrew. Not Jew. There was no J back then. So you got we're already right here in Acts 13 and 6 where you have a false prophet looking like what I'm telling you is going to look like now. Which is going to be a black male or a Hebrew male. So all parties are being brought together with the, the beastly system, the, the false messiah, the false false messiah and the false prophet covering all sectors of the world covering all sectors of the world are all covered in this great deception. Now, Proverbs 6 and 17. Proverbs 6. Let's talk about, we're talking about Mashiach Hashakar Hashakri, the false, false Messiah. Proverbs 6, 17 and 19. This is talking about the things that Yahweh hates. I'm just going to mention the main ones here. He hates a proud look, a lying tongue, and and it's a proud look, a lying tongue, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Now, if Yahweh hates something, do you think you'll be good for you to hate it? If he hates pride, which goes before the fall, if he hates a false witness. If he hates a lying tongue, 
Don't you think you should also hate those things? This whole thing about deception in the last days from the false messiah, the false false messiah, the false prophet, all these, all centers around the foundation of lies. So, if you today, as I speak, are a person who hates lies, who hates untruths, then you are already set up for being in good favor of not being deceived. You're already in a good position of not being deceived. You have to first hate lies. Jesus. Or, forget that, because that's an easy one. Because, like I said, people are leaving Jesus in droves for different, all the alphabet suit names of Yahweh Shua. But, actually, again, the lamb is... The wolf looks like a lamb. So we gonna it's going to be the Hebrew names. But what does the anti-Messiah do? He denies that Yahweh Shua came already and came in the flesh. So there's the delineation. Won't even be the name. Won't even be the name Jesus. Jeremiah 14, 14. But you should hate those the lies today. Hate them today. And then you're already in, in good position for success. Jeremiah 14, 14. And it reads, And Yahweh said to me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoke to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, and worthless things, and the deceit of their heart. That's what I just said. They're doing it in Yahweh's name. So again, it would not be, um, no one's going to be fooled by prophecy in Jesus' name, not in the latter days. The Right here in Jeremiah 14, 14, it says it's going to be false prophets in the name of Yahweh. Remember, this is a wolf in a lamb's clothing. Matthew 7, 15. Wolf in lamb's clothing. Matthew 7, 15. So don't think that because it's saying Yahweh, that it's fine. Don't think it because it's saying Yahshua, that it's fine. Matthew 7, 15. Because then you've been set up for deception. Matthew 7, 15. This is Yahweh Shua talking. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. So the false prophet that Jeremiah told us in 14, 14 is going to be speaking in the Hebrew name. Yahweh Shua says, so watch out for that because it doesn't matter that you use my name. Matthew 24, 24. Matthew 24, 24. And it reads. Again, Yahweh Shua talking. For false, pro for false messiahs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Even the elect. They're going to be the false messiahs and the false prophets. So in order to deceive, a deception um, has works as well by looking like the original. You're not going to get past fake bills with my face on it. It's going to look just like the bill, the original bill. And that's how it passes. I've seen, uh, what's the great musician? The, the best. The, uh, I've seen him. Uh, you know, you're a country. But uh, the man, seeing, I'm, I'm right there live looking in my face. The man makes it like he's split in two. Walking down the stairs and looking right at him. You have to make what is not real Copperfield. Yeah. And uh, look like what's real. That is what fools people. You, so you're not going to fool nobody in the latter days with Jesus versus Yahweh Shua. But you will fool them with Yahushua and Yahweh Shua. And Yeshua and Yahweh Shua. He was never called Yeshua. Yod -Heh is always Yah throughout the book. It's never yet. It's Yah. Get, uh, get a book, brother's book. Now, moving on. Galatians 1, 1 through 10. Galatians 1. 1 through 10. Yahweh help me. Y'all pray for me to get this to, to get this as Yahweh has given it to me. Galatians 1, 1 through 10. Shaul writing. Shaul, apostle, not from man, through man, but through Yahweh Shuham and Shik, and Yahweh the Father who raised him from the dead. Shaul saying, listen, I'm going to tell you something. And I ain't get it from man. I got it straight from the mouth of Yahweh Shua. That's what he's telling you right now. In other words, so don't question what I'm getting ready to tell you. It came straight from Hashemite. You know it did. He went to the third heaven. Yeah, so, so Shaul is telling us 
that he got his this word straight from the source. And it reads, And all the brethren who are with me, to the believers of Galatia, grace to you and peace to Yahweh the Father and our master Yahweh Shua HaMashiach, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our Father Yahweh, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you by the grace of Yahweh Shua to a different basura, which you call gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the basura of Mashiach. But even if we or a Malachim, an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel besore to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. He's not done. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other besore to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Because I do not persuade men. Or, or do I persuade men or Yahweh? Or do I seek to please men? Because if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of the Messiah. Wow. He said, I don't care if an angel falls down from heaven and tells you something different. I told you, curse him. And don't even curse him once. You curse him twice and keep it moving. You tell me. You go ahead and look. I got 200 plus videos out there. Whether I ever said that Yahweh sure never came down before. If I ever said that Yahweh didn't come in the flesh, if I ever said Yahweh didn't rise at the third day, if I ever didn't say that Yahweh Hamashiach is going to return again to receive those who love him and keep his misfolk, his misfolk of love, if someone says different than that, he is a false prophet. And he is an anti Messiah. There is no other Basora. John 13. John 13. I have a lot of scripture. I told you. You can tune in to the channel once it gets downloaded and, um, and then look at it again when I have it um, edited. So, John 13. Got so many scriptures here. And it reads in 34 and 35. And y'all are sure talking. A new commandment I give to you. That you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciple, if you have love for one another. This is what Shaul was talking about. What, what Yahweh Shua is doing is keeping it simple. You got 613 misfolk. Yahweh Shua said out of his mouth. Remember, Shaul said in, Kala, in, in the scripture I just read, from his in Galatians, that he got this word straight from the mouth of Yahweh Shua. Now here's Yahweh Shua telling you straight up that in the way to dis discern whether it's whether you are his disciple is if you have love for one another. And have love for one another as he loves you. So love him and love your neighbor as yourself. That is the summation of the Basora. So if anybody comes to you saying you you just learn this way. You better go ahead and get yourself circumcised if you're not circumcised. That you better go ahead and start wearing your sit sits. That you better put that crab cake down or whatever. And that's how you're going to get in? Then he's a liar. Now, if you love him, it's things you're going to naturally do anyway. He didn't say now you go out there and get a girlfriend on the side. He didn't say go ahead and start shooting up drugs. If you love him, there's some things you're naturally going to do anyway. And there's some next things you're not going to do. You're going to do things because it says, Yahweh Shua says right here, that you have loved one another as I have loved you. Did Yahweh Shua curse out of his mouth? Did Yahweh Shua uh, sleep around? Did Yahweh Shua uh, overeat and pick, pick out? So the, the whole law is wrapped into these two things. This is key. This is key because the deception is going to go against that simple thing. Remember, we all are Eve. Eve from this tree. And don't eat from that one. That's simple. Keep it simple, saints. We all are going to be like Eve with that same decision. John 3.18. I love John 3.18. You know why I love John 3.18? Because y'all Christians out there love John 3.16. <laughs> but God so loved the world. They came on. Shut up with that. 
Tell your preacher pork chop to read two verses down. Tell him to read two verses down while he finished out there. You see it in all the stadiums, waving the flag of John 3.16. Tell him to read two verses down, please. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. So while you're up there talking about everybody going to get in where they don't fit in, he says, believe on his name. If you don't, you condemned. Walk around the streets of Baltimore and see what a condemned building looks like. Yahweh says, I'm at the door knocking. I want to come into the house and eat with you. Is he going to knock on a condemned building to eat into a condemned building? He compares you to a condemned building if you don't believe on him. Remember, he says that he's going to prepare a place for us, a house for us. Do you think it's going to be condemned? Matthew 7 and 20. Matthew 7 and 20. I tell you, pray for a brother to get this out. Matthew 7 and 20. And it reads, Therefore, by their fruits will you know them. Remember, just because Yahweh Shua says, Hey, just love your neighbor and love me, don't mean that all bets are off. Because you're still going to be known by your fruits. Your fruits have to be righteous fruits. That don't mean you just start going in. You can go ahead and rob a bank now. Doesn't mean that. But it's the golden rule that rules. The golden rule is what's going to keep you from deception. Because here's the thing. All deception is designed against the Hebrew. Hasatan already has the world. They just want to get back to having the gas prices cheaper, the beer prices cheaper. They want to be able to, to, to go to happy hour, not to have to wear a mask. They just want to have everything go back the way it was. They live on the earth. They want the smooth living. That's all they want. They don't care about all this stuff. How many times do I got to get boosted? Hey, roll the sleeve up. Bend over, spread the cheeks, whatever to do. Take the shot. However you want to do it. It's up to you. So the deception is not for the world. The deception is planned against Yahweh's people. Because Yahweh's people are law-abiding people. So what do you do? How do you train an animal? Simple. Food. How do you uh, financially uh, steal from people? Uh, those who are out there looking for financial gain. <laughs> you, you, what you do is, what's on the hook, the bait that's on the hook, matches those who's looking for that kind of bait. So if you're out there trying to start a business, you need some money, you need cash fast, because you, you're trying to do something legit. Well, you're open and ripe to be tricked by anybody who's going who, who, <laughs> to, to, to separate you from your money. If you're not out there trying to do that, then you can't fool, fool me and trick me to steal my, my 401k because I'm not trying to put it out there like that to, to do something. So the bait matches who the fish is. Well, the bait in these latter days of deception is the law. Because everybody's out there, Yahweh's people are law abiders. They love to they keep the commandments. They keep the law. So the wolf who's in the sheep's clothing is going to have that bait out there. But you got to discern whether it's the lamb of Yah or the lamb of Hasatan. Remember, on the day of atonement, how the two goats are set before the priests who are look exactly the same. And only Yahweh discerns which one goes out into the wilderness and which one gets sacrificed for the forgiveness of our sins. Wow. Am I deep? Or well, I just, just plain know how to read this thing like it is. All those things matter. Oh, that's the Old Testament. Well, it matters for today. Those two goats looked exactly the same. One got thrown off of the cliff, and one got sacrificed for us, for getting us our sins. Today, that's what today, you're going to have two sheep, or goats, looking exactly the same. Which one has the black heart? And which one has the righteous heart? I don't want y'all thinking that black is bad. <laughs> so which one has the unrighteous heart? Which one has the righteous heart? Now, that comes from discernment and from the heart. So all deception is against Yahweh's people and he does it through the law. Again, for people who are not who knew? Let me just say it that way. 
here is a way where you can really make it clear and understandable for even the newest of persons out there who should see in your heart for truth, okay? If you reading the word law, let's see in the Old Testament, this is going to make it simple for anybody. You're in the Old Testament, reading, trying to learn stuff. Wherever you see the word law, say Yahweh Shua or Yahshua, either one. Yahshua, Yahweh, say, say his name. Replace it with that. Now, you're in the New Testament. If you're in the New Testament and you see the word, the name Yahshua, you see the name Yahweh Shua, put in the word law. So everywhere where you read law in the New Testament, say Yahshua's name. Everywhere where you see law in the Old Testament, say uh, Yahshua's name. Then you're going to see, it's going to help you, it's going to take, it's going to help you get in the forest and see the individual trees within the forest and not be lost. Because you're going to realize that Yahweh Shua is the law and then you can realize that Yahweh Shua is love. It says Yahweh Shua is love. So the law is love. So what did he say? That the law was to love him and to love your neighbor. See how it makes it simple? So now you're not in the deep forest lost. You can realize that the law is really condensed to a law of love. So in the latter days, you're going to have two parallel, you're going to have two beautiful looking sheep. Remember, even in the Old Testament, so-called Old Testament, you had King Saul and King David. David was king for 13 years before he took the throne. He was anointed by Samuel, and he went back out into the, the field to tend to his sheep. 13 years, he was a shepherd king and didn't have a throne. So you had two kings at the same time. You had a false king, King Saul, who was anointed at one time. And you had the righteous king, King David, who was out in the field shepherding the sheep. You never thought about that, did you? And even after that, you had Absalom and Solomon. Absalom was made king before, right before David died. And David had to get out of his sickbed, dying, and had to make Solomon king. So at the same time, in Israel, you had two kings, Absalom and Solomon. So, of course, they chased Absalom down. And he had this, these big, beautiful locks, got caught in a tree and got hung. So, again, I'm bringing things to your mind that you didn't consider. I want you to consider that the bait is the law, and that is what the false prophet is going to be using in this Jezebelian system that we're in right now. Micah. Micah. 5 and 1. And it reads. This is Yohanan Dawit with we'll here. Yahweh for Christians. On a famous 1590 AM. And it reads. <clears throat> Oh, gather to yourselves in troops, O oh, daughter of troops. Let me just make sure I'm reading the right thing here. O oh, daughter of troops, he has laid siege against us. They will strike the judge of Israel with a rod on the cheek. Now, if you read that, I'm proposing here, based on my studies, that this is not Yahweh Shua as some believe. This is this looks like it's reading to be the false, false Messiah. Now, if you read further down, you should read the whole, ver the whole chapter. Let's go down to verse 3 of Micah 5. And it reads, Therefore, he will give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren will return to the children of Israel. So we got... Modern day Babylon is the United States giving birth to us. We all was born over here where Yahweh's people born. Babylon has birthed us. And it says that we'll be given up. This, in my reading, in my study, I'm proposing that this will be the false, false Messiah who'll be ruling. Who'll be ruling. Let's go to chapter of the same book. Go back one. Chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And it reads, going back, we're still in Micah. 
Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in your midst? Has your counselor perished? For pangs have seized you like a woman in labor. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in birth pangs. For now you will go forth from the city, you will live in the field, and to Babylon you will go. There you will be delivered. There Yahweh will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Yahweh is going to deliver us from Babylon. We've been Babylon birthed us. We were brought over here in the transatlantic slave trade. Babylon is going to birth us. Yet Yahweh is going to deliver us. But I'm trying to make a point here about how there is a deliverer and then there is a false deliverer. Reading verse 5 of Micah 5. And this one will be peace. When the Assyrian comes into our land and when he treads in our palaces, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princely men. This, to me, really smells of the false, false Messiah. It says this one will, will be peace, but the Assyrian is going to come into our land. Now, if the, if the Assyrian is going to our land, it says it's going to raise up seven shepherds. Now, in Daniel and Revelation, they talk about this seven, the seven horn, the ten horns, and then the seven horns, or the seven crowns. And then it says in here, eight. So what you have is one horn replacing three that gives you the eight. This one horn is the Assyrian. This is the false, false Messiah. This is the Mashiach Hashakor Hashakari. The false, false Messiah is the Assyrian, which is the horn the eighth horn it grows up replaces the other three horns let's read about this in Revelations 5 and 6 now we have a whole lot of scripture on that I, I spent weeks and weeks on that on about these horns so I'm not going to go back to that look at some of those older videos but that's, I am going to read Revelations 5 and 6 and it reads and I looked, and behold, in the middle of the throne and on the four living creatures and in the middle of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirit ruachs of Yahweh, sent out into all the earth. So the Assyrian has to, remember, the, the, the lamb, the wolf is in the sheep's clothing. So the Assyrian has to copy this. You got the lamb who has the seven horns, which are the seven ruachs, of the of, of Yahweh Shua. So you have the Assyrian who's going to copy that that we see in Micah 5.5. 5. So Micah 5.5 5 is a copy of Revelations 5.6. Okay? Now, Dan, Daniel 7, 7, and 8. Daniel 7, 7, and 8. I told you, get your pen and paper ready. Daniel 7, 7, and 8. And it reads, After this I saw in the night visions, and look, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong, and it had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with his feet. It was different from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, this is the false, false Messiah, coming up from among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out. So now you got 11 minus 3 gives you 8. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. So that is the seventh that was of the eighth that's talked about. In these scriptures I'm giving you. So that is the false, false Messiah trying to mimic Yahweh Shua. Okay? And he displaces three others. Those three others I propose would be uh, three of the, of the Jewish leaders of the Messianic movement who will be accepting this Jezebelian beastly system that we are in. And who's going to fight against a a, a 
black female, well, that false messiah is going to be a white male, who's going to take over and, and, and institute the Torah. Now, why would the false messiah destroy the false false messiah? Remember, this whole thing is about the bait. The law is the bait. So you have the false false messiah is going to institute. Before that, he, he removes three horns. Our Jewish brothers are already keeping the Torah, 613. All right? Well, they can't keep all of them because you don't have animal sacrifices. You don't have a temple, so you got to build that. So you're going to have the false, false messiah is going to have the Mishkan built the way it's supposed to be, which is a dome, not like what you see in all those pictures with this long rectangle. That's a lie. He's going to build the dome. I, did, I gave you the scriptures on that. He's going to build the dome, have that dome built, and institute the Torah again. That is on the 1260 days. On the 1290 days, you got 30 days later when the false messiah is going to destroy him. Uh oh, let me, key point. Now, in this first system that the false false messiah sets up, he makes it Jew only, not going to include anyone else. So only they are going to be allowed to participate in this system. So, the false messiah comes up and kills him and institutes the Torah, or institutes but it includes all of us, everyone. Everyone will be allowed to participate. So who's not going to go against that? They're going to say, hey, that's the real messiah. He destroyed the false, false messiah who only allowed the Jews to have the Torah, and he's going to institute and let everybody, red, yellow, black, and white, we are all children in his sight, in Yahweh's name. Remember, it's not about Jehovah and Lord God is in Yahweh's name. So the false messiah kills the false false messiah and institutes the Torah with the temple the way you see it now, the long rectangle and all that stuff, which is a lie. The way Solomon made it, built it. And this sets up to be deceiving even Yahweh's elect if possible. This is how deep and this is how surreptitious this is. See, why does Yahweh, why is the serpent used as the, the spirit of this system? Because it's serpentine. The way it moves, you know, the, you know, do you know that the snake is the only creature on earth that moves the same way in the water than it does on land? No other creature on earth can do that. And there's no such thing as a straight snake. A straight snake is a dead snake. The thing about this spirit of a snake is it's an unchecked spirit that moves anyway. It's unchecked, unrestrained. And that is what you have in this system. And that is why the serpent is, is was the standard ruach of evil against Yahweh Shua. It's an unchecked spirit. Unrestrained. The way it moves, the way, the way its spirit is. What you see physically is only a manifestation of what is spiritual. So the way it moves is based on how his spirit is. Now, so I'm, I, I know that sounds complicated. Get back and read the scriptures that I sent out. Look at the, the, the channel so you can hit it again. So you're going to look at this over and over again because it's not something you can just get with one passing. Revelation 17 and 11. Revelation 17. 17 and 11. So to recap what I just said, the false false messiah sets up the temple system with the sacrifices, but he doesn't do it in the right way. He excludes everyone. The false messiah kills him and sets up the temple system with the sacrifices and includes everyone. Okay. Now, Revelation 17 and 11. And it reads, you can't get this you got to fast and pray to get this thing. First of all, you got to love truth. You got to love Yahweh Shua. You got to believe in Him. Now, Revelation 17 11, and it reads The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth. Remember, I said, and, and, and is of the seventh and is going into perdition. So that's the false, false Messiah who. Puts down three and becomes up. He, he's that eighth horn that we displaces the other three. Okay. Now, 
Let's stick in the, in the Revelation 17. Let's go down to verses 15 through 18. And it reads, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate, and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. See? They, so they turn it on her. For Yahweh has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast. Until the words of Yahweh are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. See? So I'm not just making things up. You got the false prophet who's being turned on. You got the false, false prophet who's being turned on by the false prophet. You got the worldly beastly system who is being fought against. So this is all for deception. When you see evil going down, we, those who are not of discernment thinks the evil, what is putting down the evil is good. But it's not. It's evil putting down evil to deceive Yahweh's elect, to attempt to deceive Yahweh's elect. It, all it did was exchange one evil for a greater evil. That's all it did. Because it also, if you remember, Yahweh says, Blessed is he who waits for the 1300. Let me go there. Instead of just saying, let me go to Daniel 12, 11 and 12. Let me go. Let me just read the scripture to support about how the patience of the saints. Remember, Yahweh says, In patience do you possess your souls. And he says, Blessed is the patience of the saints, not to fall for what I just read to you. Daniel 11, Daniel 12, 11 and 12. And it reads, And from the time of the daily sacrifices is taken away. See? So you got daily sacrifices instituted and then taken away. And the abomination of desolation is set up. So, so then it's reset up. There will be 1,290 days. So the false false messiah has 30 days of reigning from 1,260 days to 1,290 days. Then, blessed, but Yahweh Shua says, Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. So Yahweh's people are not going to fall for this. He says, Blessed is he who waits for the 1,335 days. Because that is when the Messiah comes. King Dawi in the flesh coming from Mount Sinai to meet up in Mount Zion. See how that all comes in a circle? That's when real Messiah comes at the 1335 days. Not the 1260, not the 1290, at the 1335. Now, I said a lot of things, and I'm, I'm, this will have to be finished next week because I already see I only got five minutes left. About black women being in charge, all this kind of stuff. Well, this is nothing new. Jeremiah told us this in Jeremiah 31, 22. I'm not going to go there because my time is running out. Jeremiah 31, 22. Yahweh says, look, it's going to be a whole new thing I'm going to bring on this earth. A woman is going to be in charge of a man. Who would have thought that? Just talking back here in this town. Woman being large and in charge, telling people what to do, ruling over nations. Jeremiah 31, 22 says this. So don't be surprised. That's when I say there's going to be a black female, which is going to be a Hebrew woman, anti-Messiah. Okay. Like I said, you already got things in place with the black vice president. You already got things in place with, with, with the black princess of England. Right now. You got that right now. So don't be shocked when this thing hits the fan. Matthew 24 and 15. I'm just going to go as long as I can until the brother says, cut it. Matthew 24 15. I knew I wasn't going to finish this. It's too deep. It's too deep. Give somebody with hakma wisdom, to untwist it for you. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise again and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Again, since I'm not going to finish anything, let me spend some little more time on this. Remember we talked about, you know those people who teach the wealth doctrine and have it now and all this stuff. They get all easy set up to be deceived by people who are out there to take your money. Well, the same thing here with people who believe in these fake healings, who need miracles that they heal their knees, heal their gout, heal their blood pressure, whatever. 
people who look for miracles and, and being having head, hands laid on and shaking and writhing, all this kind of stuff. These kind of people are set up for signs and wonders. Because if you need a sign and a wonder to believe in Yahweh Yeshua, then you just might as well set yourself up for hell. Because you should not need, the, it's a miracle, this book is a miracle. You breathing is a miracle. The, the birth of a child is a miracle. Having a, the, 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 miracles are, are around us so much that we don't even respect them or appreciate them anymore. But you gotta have a, a, something from heaven showing you for you to believe in him. If you need that, then you are set up by the, by the beast. Who's gonna show you miracles? He's gonna show you signs and wonders and miracles. And that sets up everyone who believes in his miracle healings today. You're all being set up for following the beast. Yahweh sure said he's not going to show you no sign. He said, here's your sign. That the Son of Man is going to rise like Jonah in three days. Jonah came out of the belly of the fish after three days. Yahweh sure already showed us the sign. He, was, he resurrected after three days. So now you ain't got nothing coming. For the way of looking at a miracle to prove, oh, that's him. Look what he just did. Set up for failure. You're set up for being deceived if you're looking for a sign and a wonder. Y'all sure said it out of his mouth right here himself. Stop looking for it. The false prophet. Y'all sure never in this book at all says he's going to show you a sign and a wonder. He says the only sign is that I'm going to resurrect in three days. He's already done it. So if there's any sign or wonder being shown in the latter days, it's from the false prophet who has already destroyed the false false prophet. It's from the anti-Messiah. All signs and miracles of the Messiah will be wolves in lamb's clothing. There's nowhere in this book where Yahweh Shu says he's going to show you a great sign or wonder to prove he is who he say he is. He's already done it. He's already done it. Revelation 12, 6 is going to be my last one for the day. My last scripture for the day. Revelation 12, 6. He's already done the signs and wonders. I'm going to talk about, remember, uh, Lazarus. But I don't want to talk. Go there. Okay. Revelation 12, 6. I'll talk about Lazarus next week again. And it reads... Then the woman fled into the wood. Forget it, I'm not going to read it. Remember Lazarus? He And the, 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 the one who, who died, Lazarus says, Listen, no. She, let Moses return from the dead and show them this law. So my brother's going to go down here. He said, Listen, if you don't believe the law now, if somebody rises from the dead, you're not going to believe him. Yahushua says, If someone rises from the dead, you will not believe him. And he rose from the dead, don't believe him. Next week, the whole time that we're here, I'm going to finish with this. Shalom Alakim, peace be on you. The views expressed on the preceding program does not necessarily reflect those of the Wave Broadcasting Corporation or the staff and management of